Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Hello and welcome to Adventures in Small Business, um, a joint effort by the United States Small Business Administration, uh, the Hawaii Small Business Development Center, the Mink Center for Business and Leadership, and the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific to showcase the stories of local entrepreneurs and small businesses. Um, I am your host for today. Uh, my name is Dennis Kwok. I'm the director of the Veterans Business Outreach Center of the Pacific. And today we have a very special guest, Mr. Hideo Simon, who is the co-owner of Pine and & Jigger and uh, Square Barrels, as well as a veteran. Uh, thank you for being on the show. Thank you yeah. for having me. Yeah. So, you know, um, I wanted to read a kind of a bio about you, but maybe you can tell me a little bit about yourself, your background, if you could. Sure. Yeah. Um, well, I guess I did come from uh, a sort of a military background. My, my uh, father was in the Marine Corps uh, during the Vietnam War, and um, in my raising, uh, I sort of followed the rules and restrictions of of uh, the Marines. Um, as I got older, um, I always had this sort of entrepreneurial spirit uh, growing up. And then um, uh, when I got to a point of uh, adulthood, my father obviously uh, motivated me to join the military. And, and um, I selected the Coast Guard to be uh, the actual military uh, branch that I decided to go with. And after that, uh, I still had that entrepreneurial spirit, so I, I obviously went right back into it, and, and that's how I, I got to where I am now. Okay. But, um, so why don't you tell me a little bit about how um, your restaurants came about? I mean, what was the genesis? What was the thought process? And uh, start, we can start with Pine and Sugar, because I know that was um, started before uh, Square Barrel. Sure, yeah. yeah. Um, when my wife and I uh, were married, uh, we, we lived in California. We were up and down the coast. Um, I was working for uh, Oracle Corporation, which is a big software company. Uh, meanwhile, I still had that uh, that entrepreneurial spirit. I I went into um, business with my uncle. Mm -hmm. We did uh, real estate, um, did some housing flips, and and we started purchasing uh, rental properties. And uh, all the while, my wife at the time was working in the restaurant industry. And um, she 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 did it better than anybody could. Mm -hmm. So um, when we came up with an idea to start something new, something something um, interesting and exciting, uh, we came up with a restaurant bar idea. Uh, we we partnered up with a, an old high school friend of hers, and uh, he sort of came up with the concept the concept of a uh, uh, pint and jigger. And um, we also partnered up with another um, guy uh, who's sort of the face of, of Pint and Jigger. And um, he came up with the name. We got together. We collaborated. We, we finally uh, uh, executed on a particular spot. Mm -hmm. and, and we moved back to Hawaii in order to accomplish this because uh, we needed the help of the grandparents. So um, with my background in, uh, in renovations sure. and... Um, and also having an MBA uh, with Dave's background in, in obviously running a bar. He was a bar manager for Nobu's in Waikiki, which is a big, successful uh, cocktail program. And uh, with Darren's background in business as well, and a huge network here in, in the, the business scene of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. Grace's background in, in restaurant, that's how we sort of combined forces and and uh, and developed this this uh, this I guess neighborhood loved bar and restaurant. So. Sure, um, as a patron myself, I really do love <laughs> going to Pine and Jigger. Um, now you uh, started Pine and Jigger, and then you kind of um, I, I wouldn't say branched off, but you started doing your own. Uh, you wanted to do something that was spe uh, where you had a real passion for. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, with Square Barrels. It was, uh, it, 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 it started from the fact that I loved burgers and I loved beer. And, and uh, when, we, um, when we had opened uh, Pine Jigger, it was, it was great. We, we 
had a great concept. I loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, I did still have that entrepreneurial spirit. I still wanted to keep going. And um, so when I, when I got to that point, uh, sort of a lull, I don't want to say a lull. It, mm -hmm. it was always busy. It was always a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But um, I still had that uh, sort of drive to, to do something new. Um, and the fact that I loved burgers, I loved beer. Mm -hmm. I mean, my first job when I was 14 years old, I worked at Jack in the Box. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I worked at Jack in the Box for the very f specific reason that I loved burgers so much. <laughs> um, and then working in, uh, at Oracle in, in, in the Bay Area, um, you know, I fell in love with craft beer. Uh, we would drink Sierra Nevada Pale Ales. We would drink uh, Anchor Steams. These are all... Um, Pretty big breweries now, but uh, back then they were definitely just getting started. And eventually, uh, I wanted to open a burgers and beer place, and and that's what Square Barrels ultimately is. It's it's a uh, craft burgers with craft beers. You guys just had an anniversary, right? We did. Okay. Uh, our third year anniversary. Well, so. Congratulations on that. Thank you. So you know, um, just it seems. I mean, just being in the food and beverage uh, beverage industry. Um, specifically in that industry, what are the biggest challenges you face? Uh, in Hawaii as an entrepreneur or as a business owner in food and beverage? Yeah, um, it's, there, there's there's a ton. Uh, yeah. If I could give you some specifics. Please. Um, one of the biggest hurdles that we have here in Hawaii and probably in many states is, is regulation. And mm -hmm. and, uh, and it's, it's tough for somebody who has no idea, who has no, you know, no concept of, of what it what it takes to do business in in the United States or in Hawaii or or wherever. We 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 start off with a love for the craft, right? Mm -hmm. You you maybe you 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 love to sew and and mm -hmm. you want to make a you know a seamstress store or something like that, or or you love like me, you love burgers and beer, so you want to open a restaurant that has burgers and beer. Mm -hmm. But stepping into those kinds of situations, you have no idea what it is that you're gonna you're going to have to deal with as far as getting a liquor license or getting your licensing to do business or, or food service uh, mm -hmm. permit or or uh, permits to build your space or, right. or any of that you know it's 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 there's a lot uh, involved when it comes to um, regulation and uh, and of course I mean it takes a lot of energy you know sure. just just being able to wake up every single day and put in 15 hours you know, 18 hours. Sometimes I wouldn't get to bed uh, until 3 o'clock in the morning, and I have to go right back into it at 6 o'clock in the morning. So, yeah. you know. So long hours. Yeah. Long and hours. Get, and the regulations. regulations. Yeah. Okay. Big hurdles. And how did you kind of overcome uh, these challenges or these obstacles, especially in the regulations when you had, um, I mean, did you have a mentor or did somebody guide you through? Um, I did have a mentor. Uh, when I think back to when I was a when I was a teenager, which right. is when I first started my very first business, mm -hmm. it was before I was even in the Coast Guard, I started my own little skateboarding company mm -hmm. um, because I was into skateboarding. Sure. Uh, it was it was great, and and when I think back to that that time, mm -hmm. I had no idea. Right. Uh, my dad, uh, he he gave me a little bit of guidance. You know, he gave me some books to read and that sort of thing, but it it took me going and finding this this. I think it was called the SBDC even back then, but uh, yeah. it was it was a small little office. It was on Nimitz. Uh, I can't remember. It's called Ginza West or something like that. I don't remember the name of that strip mall there, but there was a little office there. I went in there, and there was a lady behind the desk, and, and she guided me through uh, probably about 50% of all the regulations that I had to figure out at that point to just get my general excise license and, and that sure. sort of thing. <clears throat> and then growing, you know, going through life further and further, and then I, I actually, uh, I did have a mentor, and, and my mentor um, was actually somebody I knew from when I was a child. Uh, it was my uncle, my Uncle Tom. He, uh, he lives in the Bay Area, and when I went back to uh, the Bay Area after I graduated from the University of Hawaii, mm -hmm. I moved back to the Bay Area, and I actually lived at his house, mm -hmm. uh, my Uncle Tom and Aunt Kitty. And he helped me through a lot. I mean, he 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 kind of guided me through the 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 conversion from entrepreneurial spirit to actual a entrepreneurial action. Right. right. So um, 
I had this spirit. I wanted to do things. I wanted to try things out, and and he gave me some direction as to okay, well, if we're going to do this, then this is how we're going to have to like an action this plan and, almost. Yeah, right? Okay. Yeah. And um, and he played a huge part of uh, in my life, even today. You know, he's still uh, he's still a big part of my life as a as a mentor. That's great. Um, so yep. it's uh, great to have family as mentors. Uh, mm -hmm. And not only, I mean, talk about mentorship or influences. Um, you know, we talked about how you were uh, 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 a veteran in the Coast Guard. Correct. How has, you know, your military service become an uh, influence as an entrepreneur? Has it influenced you in any way? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Um, not only an influence, but uh, also like a uh, you know sort of guidance as well. Mm -hmm. um, like uh, discipline, for instance, is, was a big part of it. You mm -hmm. know, being able to wake up when you've only had three hours of sleep sure. uh, is. It, I mean, it's kind of scary because you know everything's on you. All the responsibilities are on you. So perhaps that's one way of of uh, of, of waking up just from the sheer you know, stress or, or fear of, of failure. Right. But uh, when you're in the Coast Guard, um, you're in boot camp, you're, you're sleeping three hours a day uh, for as long as boot camp is, it's about two months. And, and uh, you know, you, you go to bed at, at lights out 10.30 or, or whatever it is. I don't remember what it is now. But uh, you, then you still got to stand watch it at one o'clock in the morning, so somebody's gonna come wake you up. You gotta go do this stuff, and then, and then you go back to sleep, and then you wake up at five, and you know it's it's the same thing every day for for two months, and and um, and that's that's a little bit way of you know it's a small way of like conditioning yourself for that kind of like heavy amount of work. Um, right. One of the great things that I had when when I was in in the uh, uh, Coast Guard was I, I had this officer training program where where. Uh, they kind of expose you to many different uh, parts of the military service, and and uh, that was good because it actually helped me along the way. Where I got a little bit of exposure to to uh, investigations, I got a little bit of exposure to to accounting. Even right. um, those were all great things. And when you're in business for yourself, you kind of have to be a jack of all trades. You got to know everything from accounting to to marketing to to uh, to you know whatever I mean even people management sure. and, and that was a big part of it too is was uh, I, I had a great uh, lieutenant commander that that was uh, my boss and and he helped guide me he, sh he showed me what it was like to to have to manage people but it was also a, a great uh, way to to see the ins and outs of, of every relationship you know and sure. it was a great guy yeah. funny mm -hmm. you know we had so many uh, fun moments and in, in while I was serving and um, and I think it was it was that that helped guide me to to try to make it fun for the people that worked for me as well so yeah so I mean <clears throat> overall a very very positive experience here absolutely yeah and absolutely. it only helped only uh, helped. Yeah, yeah, that's wonderful to hear. I mean, it was it it really was uh, a big part of turning. I, I don't want to say like he, he, the the old school way is you go in the military and you become a man or yeah. or, or whatever. Sure. But but it really did turn me. You know, change me from being this kid mm -hmm. to an adult. You know, it was it was a great experience for me to to become. Uh, you know, push me and drive me and, and try to get to the, my potentials right. because otherwise I wouldn't have known, right? right. When, you, when you go into boot camp, all these guys uh, are, you know, wet behind the ears. They don't know what they're getting into. And then and then all of a sudden they drive you uh, so hard yeah. to the point of, you know, breaking down. But as long as you get through it, you know that you're going to be, you're going to be successful, right? So one way or another. Yeah. So, um, so uh, we're going to take a short break and uh, we'll be back in a minute. Thanks. Hello everyone, I'm DeSoto Brown, the co-host of Human Humane Architecture, which is seen on Think Tech Hawaii every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. And with the show's host, Martin Despang, we discuss architecture here in the Hawaiian Islands and how it not only affects the way we live, but other aspects of our life, not only here in Hawaii, but internationally as well. So join us for Human Humane Architecture every other Tuesday at 4 p.m. on Think Tech Hawaii. 
Hi, my name is Bill Sharp, host of Asian Review, coming to you from Honolulu, Hawaii, right here in the center of the Pacific Ocean. Asian Review is the oldest of the 35 or so shows um, uh, broadcast by Think Tech Hawaii. We've been in production since 2009. Our goal is to provide you, the viewer, with information, breaking information about events in Asia. Asia being anything from Hawaii west to Pakistan, from the Russian uh, Far East, south to Australia and New Zealand. We hope to see you every Monday afternoon at 5 p.m. Um, thank you for joining us again. Uh, my name is Dennis. And I'm with the Veterans Business Outreach Center, and we're going to continue our interview with Hideo Simon. Um, Hideo, yes. uh, I do have a question. Uh, you know, considering the fierce competition in Hawaii's markets, uh, how would you highlight your company's, and when I say company, I mean, I'm really talking specifically about your two restaurants, uh, sure. competitive advantage. I mean, what makes you guys special, yep. besides for the fabulous food? <laughs> yeah. uh, well, you know, Hawaii is tough. Um, but one of the great things about Hawaii is that we are very close-knit, and, and uh, in many ways, it's not so much competition, but it's collaboration uh, amongst our, our competitors. Uh, is, it, it, it's, a, it's a big part of this sort of transition and movement to new and better things, right? You, you can't, can't approach the situation of, like, the gastropub of, of Hawaii. It's, it's more about, you know, well, this is what people are looking for. This is the kind of stuff that people want. So let's do it. Let's do the best we can. Mm -hmm. And if other people are doing it, then we need to we need to help them mm -hmm. uh, and 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 grow this whole scene together. Because if we just sit in you know the stagnant sort of uh, everything's going to be the same forever. Yeah. Then then we're we're never going to get anywhere, mm -hmm. right? So that was one of the great things about um, the the gastro pubs of, of Hawaii when we first got started. There wasn't really any around, mm -hmm. and and uh, we've seen a, a lot of great ones come about, right? So um, so what you know, one like I said, one of the great things about collaborative efforts is mm -hmm. is that you start to bring a supply to Hawaii because when we first got started, um, you know, Whole Foods obviously had had a great supply of, of of uh, um, you know craft beer and, mm -hmm. and why craft beer was th there wasn't any breweries that were were really brewing much for beers. Uh, there was like this place called HIBC, mm -hmm. um, which is not around anymore. But they were doing some really fun beers, and mm -hmm. we tried to get those guys on on our taps at the time. Uh, Maui Brewing was doing some fantastic beers, but sure. they were. On Maui, so you know there wasn't a lot of a huge access. Mm -hmm. Everything was coming in from out of out of state or out of the country, mm -hmm. and in order to for us to bring in more, we had to give the distributors mm -hmm. uh, a reason for it, right? Sure. And one of the reasons was that we now we've got how many restaurants that are looking for craft beer here in Hawaii. Mm -hmm. So let's start, you know, bringing these things in shiploads mm -hmm. and and uh, and let's start selling. So that was a great thing about. Uh, um, that collaborative effort. Mm -hmm. uh, Competition-wise, though, um, it's it is tough because you know Hawaii is a very finite uh, um, sort of state. I, I guess you could say uh, um, there's very little little land. There's very little uh, uh, resources, and and you know that's that's it's it's tough to work in in that sort of environment. And sure. like I said, with collaborative efforts like the craft beer movement. It, it helped us to bring um, a lot to Hawaii uh, as a result of it. But then, uh, you know, when I when I started uh, Square Barrels, a lot of the local craft breweries were actually popping up, and, and that gave us a huge access because now we here in Hawaii, we where we used to have next to nothing, mm -hmm. or even on Oahu more specifically. Now we've got Waikiki Brewing, Honolulu Beer Works, we've got Lani Kai, we've got Stu Bum and Stonewall. We, I mean, all these guys are 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 doing fantastic beers. Mm -hmm. They're brewing it locally. Um, there's there's such a great uh, opportunity for us to mm -hmm. to continue with that um, collaborative effort. But again, you have to somehow keep that whole creative aspect to, to everything and, and sort of be different in, in your own little monopolistic uh, comp competitive way. But it's it's tough. Yeah. But at the same time, like I said, if 
as long as you're always kind of looking for uh, new and better things, then I think you're 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 in the right path. So. Yeah. I mean, we talked about the biggest challenges for you. I mean, the operations, the business side of the um, of running a food and beverage. I mean, there's got to be a joyful side as well. So, if you can explain, yes. you know, what what makes you know what makes you keep on driving, and you know, what makes you happy running yeah. these types of businesses. So, uh, it it really has to do with um, the craft, and and I know I talked about it. It's like. You, you might have the love for the craft, that, that burgers and beer or whatever, and, and, and then, uh, but then when you actually run the business, mm -hmm. it, it turns into probably about 10% of your day. Right. Or even less sometimes, you know, when, you're, when you wake up in the morning and, and you gotta file an insurance claim or, or you're, you, you gotta get your payroll s sorted or, or you gotta pay your, your, uh, your taxes for the mm -hmm. month or whatever. You know, it's, it, it, there's so many things, but then you still have that one little sliver of stuff that you, you can you dive into and, and really enjoy. Like, uh, just, just have that, that moment of sort of zen. You sit down and you can enjoy that burger that, that, uh, that your chef has has created and 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 you just sit there and enjoy it and and, and just sit back and say wow man I'm, this is what it, what it's all about right sure. and um, you know I, I I do enjoy a lot of uh, of the other stuff too the creative side of things developing logos developing uh, new um, new artwork or graphics and and that sort of thing and um, my background is in in marketing. Uh, I graduated from the University of Hawaii with a bachelor's in, in uh, business administration with an emphasis in marketing. My MBA is also um, business administration, obviously, but, mm -hmm. uh, but focused in marketing. So I took many classes on consumer behavior and, and uh, marketing uh, mixes and, and, and efforts, and, and that's, what, that, what, that's what drives me about business. Um, but again, it all comes back to that little sliver of time that I can actually sit back and enjoy the, the fruits of my labor, yeah. so to speak. So. The one hour a day, maybe, yeah. at the most. Yeah. <laughs> at the most. <laughs> um, you know, uh, Hideo is not only, you're not only um, a client of the VBOC, but you're also a mentor. That's right. Yeah, yeah. so um, one of the great things that Hideo does is he actually, um, there's a lot of uh, businesses or startups that want to open um, food and beverages, and Hideo mentors them um, all for free, and he uh, spends time with these, um, you know, aspiring entrepreneurs, which is really yes. great. Yeah. Um, so um, maybe we can talk a little bit about, you know, you when you started your business, when you were um, doing that skateboard business, you said sure. that you got some help from the SBDC. Um, yeah. And uh, you know, uh, you know, how has like uh, the S SBA realm assisted you? Mm -hmm. um, or if you had any assistance. Yeah, um, so again, yeah, with the SBDC, uh, like I said, there was a lady behind the counter and yeah. she helped me a tremendous amount. I, I, I don't remember how many times I, I went to that counter <laughs> and, and asked her questions <laughs> um, because we didn't have cell phones, we didn't have all sure. that, that stuff. So yeah. I would have to either pick up a landline and, and, and call and, or um, you know, if I really needed some direction because we didn't have I even internet, right? Sure. I mean, we didn't, we didn't have the ability to go online and, and download forms or anything like that. I had to go over there, I physically fill out the forms, write checks and, and all that stuff. Um, but what I what I do remember even from that point is um, her directing me to the SBA. Mm -hmm. And uh, my first business was skateboarding company. The second business was a sort of skateboarding, snowboard, surfing distribution company. And <clears throat> that was actually um, what I wrote uh, my uh, my term paper mm -hmm. on for uh, entrepreneur marketing at at UH. Uh, but Meanwhile, while I was doing that, I actually went down to the SBA because mm -hmm. she had directed me and said, hey, you know, there's, there's SBDC, but there's also the SBA, and, and you, you, if you're looking for you know, money or you need a loan or, or something like that, uh, you can go down there, you can talk to them, and then um, maybe even talk to, them, to, talk to one of the SCORE mm -hmm. uh, volunteers. Um, volunteers. Mm -hmm. And that was great because <clears throat> I can't remember the guy's name, but... Um, when I went down there and I talked to the guy, he had something similar. Uh, I remember he, he had a restaurant, and um, he had since retired from that, that business, but that's kind of what started me with the whole restaurant business was, was uh, him talking about it. And I wasn't in the restaurant business at the time. I mean, I did work in a restaurant. I worked as a server uh, for, for a couple years, but... 
uh, he he's, he told me about the ins and outs of restaurant business, and 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 it was helpful because it kind of brought this whole like sort of uh, motivation to get into that business. Um, and then that that also uh, continued on because I I from that point I had this relationship with SBA. Mm -hmm. So moving back to the Bay Area, and I was in real I was in a real you know I had a real estate business. I still have this real estate business, but. During that time, when we were talking about opening another restaurant, then I went back to the San Francisco uh, office, the SBA there, and I spoke to uh, one of the SCORE volunteers there mm -hmm. and started talking about, um, you know, I wanted to open a restaurant. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we ended up re opening it here in Hawaii, obviously, but, but uh, at that point, we were, we were talking about it, and he gave us a bunch of resources, too, like... Uh, um, well, first off, you need to write a business plan. Every, whether you have, you're asking for money or, or you just need a plan or something written out, he gave us access to these templates that were like, okay, well, this is a, this is a, a, a business plan for a restaurant. This is a business plan for a, a taco truck or this is a business plan for a, a sports bar or something like that. So I had the ability to look at these different things and then see how they're written what kind of uh, resources that that uh, they use to to get the information that they needed for mm -hmm. for writing these things up? So, I mean, it was it was a huge resource for me, um, and I think it's a great resource for anybody, mm -hmm. obviously, to to go through these things because you're never going to know uh, how to write a business plan until you actually see something that's sure. already been written up. So, yeah, for sure. Um, on a kind of a a personal note, I mean, if you could elude, elude the audience and let everybody know, you know, what your plans are for your businesses. I mean, what mm -hmm. holds, uh, what's, what does the future <laughs> look like for Square yeah. Barrels or Pine sure. Trigger? Um, well, I don't want to get too much into uh, the secrets of, of uh, wh where we're going, but um, obviously Pint and Jigger is, uh, is, has been doing very well and, and uh, um, well received among the neighborhood and everything like that. So. Uh, we we did uh, we we did some amazing things over the years. Um, I guess in the future you may see another pint and jigger pop up uh, somewhere else on the island. Um, but uh, that I mean it, it it's tough to to think that far in the future just because of uh, you know how how difficult it is to continue the operation. So, um, but we've we've been doing uh, very well, and and uh, my partner uh, Dave Newman, who is kind of the face of the the business has been doing uh, amazing things and it's always creating new and, and better uh, experiences for everybody so you know that I couldn't ask for anything better for that um, square barrels uh, we we do have um, a, a brewing license uh, in place for our location here in downtown um, the idea is that uh, we'll continue to, to uh, create new and, and better beers uh, in the future to the point of maybe someday we might we might uh, be able to open our or build a, a significant size brewery. Oh, I look and, forward and, to yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we're excited about that. It's wonderful. Uh, but it is definitely uh, something that is going to require a lot more time <laughs> and effort, and uh, I, I don't know how, <laughs> how much more I got left in oh, me. You know, well, so I hope your success <laughs> continues. Appreciate it, and thank you for joining me. Today. Yeah. yeah, thank you for having me. I I do appreciate it. All right, that was uh, Adventures in Small Business. Uh, with our guest Hideo Simon, uh, I'm Dennis Kwok from the Veterans Business Outreach Center. Thank you all for joining me.